So you have just downloaded the interactive brokers mobile app and you're like, man, this thing is hard to use. Well, guess what? Don't worry. In this video, I'll be covering some of the core features and how to use them in the interactive brokers mobile app. So with that said, let's get over to my laptop and get started. In this video, I'll be giving you a step-by-step -step tutorial of the interactive brokers mobile app. So here, I'm assuming that you have already created the account, it is verified and your account is funded. So the next step is for you to log into your account and get familiar with the mobile app. So here, I'm just gonna specify my username and log in. So once you have been successfully logged into your account, you'll be landed on the home page. Here, you'll see a performance of your portfolio. However, if you have not bought any stocks yet, then this will be pretty much empty. So here you can see the performance of your portfolio for the current year, year to date, the last month, month to date, and a week. So if I was supposed to select one week, then you'll see the performance of my portfolio for the past week and vice versa for the year to date. Now here in the middle, you have the option to view statements, transactions such as deposits and withdrawal, purchasing of stock, and here you have the option to transfer funds between your account, etc. So let's take a look at the statements tab first. So on the statement tab, it will allow you to generate a statement for your account and you can select the period which you want. So for example, monthly, then you will select the date. I'm just going to say July 2023 and then view. So this is a report of my portfolio for July. So when I expand account information, I'll see pretty much the information about my account. When you look at net asset value, you will see all your stocks plus dividends plus cash, which is in your portfolio. Let's minimize that. Mark to market performance summary. Let's scroll down on this report. You have things like your cash report to see what your starting cash is and what it ended up in July. Things like that, right? So you can take your time and go through the report. So here I'm going to select done to go back to the main menu. When you select transactions, you will see your pending orders that you have submitted. When you look at trades, you'll see all the trades that you have took. On the transfers, you'll see the transfers that you have made. And on the recurring, you'll see a list of recurring by orders that you would have set for to reoccur, right? So let's go back to the home menu by selecting home. Now let's select transfer funds. So the transfer funds pretty much allows you to transfer money between your account. So here I have two accounts. So let's say I wanted to transfer from this account here to this account. Then I'll select this account and then select continue to make the transfer. However, I'm not going to transfer anything because my account is pretty much empty. So I'm going to select done here. And on your account settings is where you can make changes to your account. So when you were creating your account, there were some initial questions like what kind of assets do you want to purchase like stocks, bonds, ETFs. So now if you wanted to purchase bonds and you did not select it when you were creating an account, you could come to settings and make that change. So I'm going to select my individual account and then select continue. And here you can make pretty much any change to your account. So when you scroll down, you see the list of options that you can change, right? So by default, dividend reinvestment is not enabled. So you could come on the trading, select dividend election, and then you select what you want to do with your dividends, right? So here, I have reinvest selected, right? So here I'm going to select done to go back. If you have any issues and want to contact support, then this is where you would contact support from. Here you can see a summary of my portfolio. Here you can see that it shows like the daily change in terms of profit and loss and the prices. So to see like a total profit and loss gains, then you select unrealized profit and loss. And here you can see which of your positions are in a profit and which are actually in a loss. To see what your stocks actually were, then you select market value. So this should give you an idea of how much each of your stock actually worth. Now let's say you wanted to purchase a stock. When you scroll down on the home page as well, you will see news events like this one, Microsoft Dividend coming up, right? So you will see things like that on your home page as well. So here I have a watch list and it shows some stocks that are currently in my watch list. And at the bottom here, it shows, let me step back. I selected that by accident. Now here at the bottom, it shows up the performance of some major indexes. They also have a academy where you can learn for free. So when you scroll down somewhere on the screen, 
you have a bunch of information we can learn from. Now at the bottom of the screen if you scroll down, what you will see is just more news articles and information about the stock market. And most of them will be related to the stocks that are in your portfolio. So that's the home screen. Now let's view what's happening on the portfolio tab. So on the portfolio tab, it gives you a summary of your portfolio. The net value of your portfolio, your daily profit and loss, the total profit and loss of your account, right? And all the positions you own, the number of shares, the number of shares you own, the profit and loss in each, and the last price change. Now if you want to purchase a stock, You'll go on the trades tab. So let's select trade. To purchase a stock, you will select the search icon here and search for the stock that you want to purchase. So let's say you want to purchase Apple, then you'll search for AAPL. Then you select AAPL and it is the one that is on NASDAQ, right? And then here, if you have shares in Apple, you have the option to sell it. So here, Apple is trading for just about $178 per share. One of the benefits of interactive brokers is that it allows you to purchase fractional shares. So you don't have to have the entire $177 to purchase a share. Under the quantity option here, this is where you determine how much shares you want to purchase. However, the quantity selected is 100, but you want to change that to cash. So you select the little drop down here, and then at the bottom of the screen, you will select USD and not shares. For now, just select 500 USD and once you select that 500 USD, you can change the value from here. So if you only have $10 to invest, then you can specify $10, right? So that is very important. Now for the order type, you have different order types. So market means that you purchase it at the current price it is. So it's 177.75. Now let's say you anticipate it to drop to say $170 per share then what you can use in this case is a market limit. So for simplicity, we're going to select market, right? So the quantity has changed, so we have to switch that back to USD. Now let's select USD again. You can select any of the US dollars here, and then you just adjust it to how much that you have to invest. So I'm just gonna say 10. Now time forcing determines when you want the trade to take place. If it doesn't take place on the day, then that trade will be canceled. So when you select the drop down, you can say good until cancelled, right? That means the trade will stay there or the order will stay there until you cancel it if it is not filled. And then you will select slide to buy. However, I expect this to fail because sufficient balance is not on my account, right? So here's asking me to confirm cash quantity order. So I'm going to select this and accept and continue. So it's giving me the warning pretty much saying I don't have enough money so I'm going to select dismiss. Alright so I'm going to cancel the buy harder here. Yes. And if you had some shares you would just select sell and then you will specify the amount of shares that you want to sell. My position is currently zero so I can't sell any shares. That's basically how you buy and sell shares. So let's cancel this. Let's go back. Now let's say you want to deposit some money to your account. In order to do this, select the menu icon at the bottom, scroll down and search for transfer and pay. This is where you can make deposits and withdrawal. So select transfer and pay, then select deposit funds, select the account that you want to make the deposit to and then select continue. So here I have several account linked already. That's why it's showing them. However, in your case, you're going to select new deposit now let's scroll down and we're going to take our time and go through this section. So if you do not have a US bank account, the best way for you to fund your account is through bank wire. So you would select get instructions, scroll down, and then you fill out the institution that will be sending money and the amount that you expect to deposit, right? When you select get instruction, they will provide you with the bank address, the account number and routing number for you to send the money to. That's what you'll get when you select get wire instructions, right? So it will be just like you're transferring from your local bank to an international bank. That's exactly what it is if you have ever done it before. So it's not complicated. So here I'm going to select back. I'm going to select. So I'm going to scroll down again and then select new deposit method. Now another way international clients can fund your account is using WISE. WISE is a great platform. It allows you to get a US bank account. Now, once you get that US bank account, 
you can deposit money using your Visa, Debit or Mastercard or credit card to WISE and then you can link your WISE account to your Interactive Brokers account. So I have done a video on that already so I'll leave a link to the, in the description below how you can link your WISE account and how you can fund your WISE account, right? So let's scroll down. Now for a direct debit from your bank account, select get instructions. And for this, your bank must be held in the United States. Do you want to continue? Let's select yes. So from here, what you need is your account number and your routing number. And once you have this, you can then send money directly from your bank account to your WISE account. So here, I'm just going to select finish. Now let's scroll down and select our deposit method again. Now the connect your bank via ACH method allows you to connect your interactive brokers account directly to your bank account. So if you're supposed to select connect here, your bank must be located in the United States. If we select yes, then what will happen is that it's going to ask you to select your bank. Let's give it a minute to come up. So here you can enter your banking information or select login at your bank. So when you select login at your bank, Scroll down, specify your account name here, right? And then you select verify your bank account. However, I do not have a US bank account to simulate that. So I'm going to select done. Now let's scroll down again and look at the other methods. You also have online bill pay where you can set them up as a bill pay and then you make the payment. You can also mail a check, which is a little bit outdated and takes a long while, but it is possible. Now let's go down to wise, which I mentioned earlier. So last but not least, you have transfer from WISE Balance. So if you're supposed to select transfer from WISE Balance, it will ask you to log into your WISE account, right? So it's currently detecting the, the information that is in my WISE account. So if I say deposit, then it will deposit the money. So I've done a step-by-step -step tutorial on how you can link your WISE account to your interactive brokers. I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video. So I'm going to select back because I don't want to deposit any money now. And WISE is really a great option for you to use. So here I'm going to select done. Now to withdraw money, you go back to more. Select withdraw funds. If you have existing account that is linked, then you'll select that option. However, if there is nothing for you, then you select use new withdrawal method. So you can do a bank wire. You can connect your bank via ACH. And you can do a direct debit. And here you can see I have the option to transfer to my WISE balance as well. So those are pretty much the core functions that you will need to utilize Interactive Brokers mobile app. Once you get familiar with these features, then you can always play around and learn more about the other features that are available. I hope this video has helped you a lot. And don't forget to subscribe, give me a share. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.